want you to rise and just greet somebody next to you. Come on, just rise, walk around and greet each other. And as you are doing that, please, can you move forward? If there's a seat that is vacant in front of you, please, let's just move forward. So make sure that we occupy the seats that are in front of us. to the front. Just move to the front. Don't worry. Just move to the front. Please, can we move? Let's not leave some spaces so that those who come will occupy the seat behind us. Be free to move. Just want to greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Are there people in the house? Amen. It's good to see Sister Rina. God bless you. In the name of our Lord Jesus, amen. It's good to see the Kelechi family. I mean, Brother Felix and Kelechi's family. Good to see you in the name of our Lord Jesus, amen. Evangelist Daniel, it's good to see you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus. Brother James, we welcome you. It's good to see you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus, amen. And also, you know, our pastors elect, Pastor Greta and Victor, everyone else, the leadership elders, deacons, it's good to see in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. And those who are, who are also here for the first time, it's good to see you. We welcome you. Here, everybody is somebody and Jesus is Lord. Amen. We know that it's half term, so most people are on holidays with their children. Amen. We know some people are at work, but let's keep them in our prayers in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. And as, we've, as we have had, Bishop is in Brussels. He'll be back in the week. Let's continue to pray for him as he continues to minister to God's people in Belgium. In the wonderful Lord, name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. I just want the worship team just to sing, Rain, Jesus, Rain. And then we will all share the word in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Rain, Jesus, rain. Rain, Jesus, rain. You are the King of Zion. You just love. Jesus 
Every family that is represented here, Lord, we declare our lives will never be the same again, not by power, nor by might, but by your spirit, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, have your way in this place, have your way in this place, in the name of Jesus, we come against anything trying to exalt itself above the knowledge of Christ in this place, in the name of Jesus, any powers of darkness, any strongholds, any fiery darts from the kingdom of darkness, we deflect you back to the kingdom of hell, in the mighty name of Jesus, Rikatabo Sanda, Rekesikatabo Sekeya, Riko Satababo Sika, Reketebo Sika Tarababo Saya, in this place, King of glory, have your way in this place in the name of Jesus. We are here to be ministered of you, King of glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, touch us, oh Lord. Touch us mentally, touch us physically, touch us psychologically, touch us, my Father, spiritually, touch us financially, touch each and every arena of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We magnify your name. Be glorified in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. We cover each and every one of us and every family that is represented here. My Father, with the blood of the Lamb, even those who are not here. My Father, those who have traveled, those who are working. We pray for them and their families and we cover them with the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise. And all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' mighty name. We pray and we believe. Amen and amen. We are welcome to sit in the presence of the Lord. In the name of our Lord Jesus, amen. I would like to welcome also those who are online, our online viewers. We welcome you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus, amen. And this afternoon... Um, I'm just going to be simple and I'm not going to take much of your time. 
I just believe the Holy Spirit just wants to remind us even on some of the scriptures that we are familiar with, some scriptures that sometimes we even recite, you know, by memory, but maybe without deeply thinking on what those scriptures mean. So um, this afternoon, uh, the context or the scripture that the, the Holy Spirit wants to minister to us is Psalm 23, Psalm 23. Psalm 23, a scripture that most, if not all of us, are familiar with in the name of our Lord Jesus. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Somebody say amen. Father, we just want to thank you for this word once again. And we pray, King of glory, that you would use me as a vessel to minister to your people in the name of Jesus. Father, we know in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And let on this word became flesh and dwelt among men. And we know as you minister to us, this word you are ministering God to us in the mighty name of Jesus you are ministering life to us in the mighty name of Jesus daddy we thank you Holy Spirit take over preeminence right now in the name of Jesus amen and amen so in this context as we know this is a context that was written by David and it was written Letter in David's life after he had had that experience of being a shepherd. As we know that even when he was anointed to be king, we know his brothers were all gathered who had that experience in the army, who had what it takes in terms of their appearance and experiences to be able to be anointed as king, their CVs were adequate for that kind of a position in comparison to David. And as we know that during that same time, he was busy looking after the sheep. He was a shepherd. And we know that some will say to Jesse, uh, David's father, that none of his other sons that were parading to be king God had chosen and so someone said well not Sid he said are these all your sons and Jesse said no they still won but he's out there looking after the sheep and he said we will not sit until he arrives and so David came from where he was shepherding the sheep and the moment he just appeared as a young teenager, the Lord said, this is the one. That's the one that you're supposed to anoint as king. And we know David was anointed. And even when he was anointed, he didn't immediately become a king. He still went back to the fields to continue being a shepherd. Hallelujah. Which is very important. You know, how many do know that even when the Lord has called you, it might not necessarily mean at that time. 
You know, this is sometimes the era that we are getting in these last days. If you are told God has called you to be a pastor, he's called you to be an evangelist, he's called you to be an apostle, it is important to know that there is also preparation time. Hallelujah. He was anointed as king, but yet it took years, maybe another 15 or so years for him to become king. Why? Because the Lord was preparing him. And therefore, preparation time is very important. That's not where my preaching is on. I'm just passing by. Hallelujah. And so, with that experience that David had as a shepherd, he looked at the characteristics of a shepherd to the sheep, and he found some similarities in who God was to him. Hallelujah. And we all know again that when he went back to look after the sheep, then we had Goliath there, who everyone in the nation was afraid of, including King Saul. But yet David was not afraid of Goliath because he knew he had the experience of what the Lord had done when he was looking after the sheep. And we know he went, when he went to take some food after his father had told him to take some food to his brothers and you know he saw that there was chaos and he wondered what's going on and asked in detail and he was told you see this and say come side Philistine is you know threatening that he's gonna destroy and he would want any of us to confront him and fight with him or else we are destroyed as a nation and David said to Saul <laughs> I'm ready to confront Goliath and looking at David's inexperience in the army and looking at his age and looking at him being a teenager, there was no convincing that he could do it. But when he remembered, when he was looking after the sheep, how he was able to protect the sheep even when the lions or the bears would try to you know, come after the sheep. And he knew that he was able to do that through the power of God. Then he was able to tell Saul that I'll be able to deal with this uncircumcised Philistine. Hallelujah. And so it's all these things that was echoing in Dave's memory when he was writing Psalm 23 and he looked and he thought, the way I looked after the sheep when I was, you know, a shepherd and I would protect them and I would provide for them and I would care for them and the sheep were dependent on me. He then took the same and mirrored it all, saw some similarities between us and our father. Hallelujah. And that's why he went on to say, the Lord is my shepherd. And this afternoon, the Lord is reminding us that he is our shepherd. Just tell somebody next to you that the Lord is your shepherd. He, he still cares for you. Tell, tell somebody. He, he, he still provides. He's still your provider. Tell somebody next to you. He, he, he's still protecting you. Hallelujah. Because I think sometimes, you know, in our walk in the Lord... We forget who God is. We have things where we are able to surrender and say, Lord, or we started with, you know, I'm fasting and I'm praying and, uh, you know, I would like you, God, to, to do something for me, to, to provide for me. To, for, to, to, I'm praying for my marriage. I'm praying for my relationships. I'm praying for the job. I'm praying for the business. There's that level where we, we surrender to the Lord. And yet, now when you look at other things, you are thinking that segment or that stage was for God. Now it's me to take it up. It's my own way. It's my strategy. But Psalm 23 is telling us the Lord is still our shepherd. Even after David had become king, he still knew that it's got to be the Lord. Hallelujah. Why sometimes we are finding so much struggles 
in these last days in so many areas of our lives is because yes we come and we, we we stretch our hands and we say lord i surrender and we we are prayed for and we cry tears and we confess faith and yet when we go out there is something different you take up again that thing and you're saying no i'm going to find means and ways for me to be able to deal with this situation. I'll find means and ways for me to be able to deal with, you know, my marriage. I'll find means and ways for me to be able to deal with my ministry. I'll find means and ways to be able to deal with my business. But yet, in this scripture, David did so clear. It doesn't matter how high you become. It doesn't matter how successful you become. It doesn't matter how things can be so bad. It doesn't matter which mountain you are facing. The Lord is still your shepherd and you shall not want. He says in John, I'm the good shepherd. You know, he actually confirms what David stated in Psalm 23. He says, I'm the good shepherd. He says, my sheep hears my voice. And I know them and they will follow me. The Lord wants you to depend on him. It's not the job that you're supposed to depend on. It's not your strategies that you're supposed to depend on. Yes, coincidentally, they might have worked. But do you know if God was not in it, they wouldn't have worked. It's not your boss that you're supposed to depend on. You know, sometimes as children of God, when things are working, instead of focusing of, on God, you want to focus on how things have worked. If somebody has done something for you, it's God who is used to them. Instead of you focusing on them and now and going back to them, and sometimes you end up even falling out. Because somebody will think, well, you know, I, I managed to do something for you. I'm not going to do it again. But instead of going back to God and say, Father, I thank you. And I, I, I pray that you continue to command sources. You continue to command resources from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. We tend now to follow that channel which the Lord has used in order to bring a blessing into your life. The Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. The Lord wants you to depend on him. He said, I'm your shepherd, or you shall not want. All those who, I want to be strong, I want to be popular, I want to be famous. And yet the Lord wants us to be able to be a blessing. Hallelujah. And so it's important. You've got to know that whatever you are asking from your shepherd or whatever you are depending God on or whatever you are requesting God on, what is the agenda? Because you can never cheat God, if I may use that word. You might be able to, to lie to men, but you cannot lie to God. You can tell me I need this because I want to do something else and what yet you want to do other things other than what you have said to me. But before God, he knows your heart. And so it's important. And sometimes we're saying, why am I still struggling? Why am I not having more than enough like others? It's because your motives are not right. Are you really depending on him? Or you are depending on your own self and your own strength so that at least you will show that it's you. So many times God has done things for us, but we go and give glory to ourselves. We go and glorify our names. But just like David, even when the Lord made him to be all, say that he was a man after his own heart. He still understood the principle of dependence on God. The Bible says we do not move by sight, but we move by faith. Faith in hope, faith in God. And without that faith, it's impossible to please him. So as long as we are expecting to see change, as long as we are expecting to see expansion, we say, Bishop say this is our year of building and expansion. None of that can ever happen minus the good shepherd. 
the Bible says if you build the house without the Lord, you, you build it in vain. So anything that we want to do right now, it needs us to depend on him. We've got to go to a place of dependence. We need to stop using our own strategies so many times. And I'm sure you are sitting there and you know so many times where you've tried your own ways and then later on you come back. Now things have not worked and you're saying, Lord, now forgive me. Or, you know, I've come to the end of myself and I need you to intervene. Let's not go up to that. Let's not get to that. Dependence on God is a lifestyle. It's not seasonal. God wants you to depend on him every day of your life. It's like a breathing system. And there's nothing small, there's nothing big. You know, sometimes I find myself saying prayers, even maybe in situations where somebody, if they see me praying, they will maybe laugh and wonder, you must be joking. But why? Because I've learned to depend on him. When I go on the road, I say, Holy Spirit, let's drive to work. I've learned not to take it for granted that if I leave the house, I'm coming back. Because some people never got back home. Accidents happen on the way. And an accident doesn't necessarily mean you are on the wrong. It could be somebody else who is on the wrong who will cause it. So sometimes somebody will say, oh, no, me, I'll never have an accident. I'm careful. No, it's not about that. It's about him being your protector. Amen. Him protecting you. And so we've got to go to the basics of just depending on him. Waking up and say, Father, I thank you because I'm alive this morning. I thank you for perfect health. I thank you because my children are alive and healthy. Those basics which we take for granted is where God wants us to go back to and know that our lives from the beginning or from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, it's all about him. For you to be able to be in your job, in your business, it's him. Why don't you thank him and say, Father, I thank you for the job that you have given. Instead of complaining and murmuring, Lord, when will I ever get a job which I'm like this? Like, Why can't you thank him for where you are? Because you are depending on him. He's providing for you. It might be that you are in a process. It doesn't mean that he has left you. He is still with you. And so the scripture goes on to say, he leads me beside still waters. He leads me. Who is leading you this afternoon? The systems of this world? Your friends? Your education? Your knowledge? I'm not saying those things are bad. But are you consulting with your shepherd first? Are you consulting with the master? To say, Lord, lead me, guide me. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Is the Lord ordering your steps this afternoon in any area of your life? It is important that we know that it is the Lord who can only lead you in the right direction. Like I was saying, it's important, or like I'm saying, it's important to pray in every situation. You're going for, a, for interviews for a job. Lord, lead me and guide me. Which one is the right job? We are just looking and saying, oh, I want the one with the most money. Oh, this one looks good, but it could be hell when you get there and you will not even last a month. The business, Lord, this is what I'm thinking. Is this the good business for me? You take time to pray. You take time to fast and say, Father, lead me. Is this, is this a good business for me? Is this the right time for the business? Where should the business be situated? Those things, they look to be small. They look to be minor, but they are very important. 
when the Lord leads and guides you, then you will then be able to, even when things goes wrong, you're able to go back to the Lord and say, Father, now I'm, I'm stuck here. I need divine intervention. If you're not married, you have to trust the Lord and say, Father, lead and guide me. Who is the right spouse for me? It makes it easier when things go wrong, you're saying, Father, you brought this spouse or you brought this man and this woman in my life. Now we have issues here. Holy Spirit intervene. But if it was what we call permissive will, the Lord will say, this is your choice. This is what you wanted. And so you find some things in our lives that we get stuck and, you know, we, we don't know what to, to do. And now we don't feel the confidence to come in the presence of the Lord is because we used our own minds. We used our own, you know, strategies. We depended on our own reasoning capacity. But this afternoon, the Lord is saying, I am your shepherd. I want to lead you. I want to guide you. I want to provide for you. You will never lack anything as long as I'm the center of your life. That's what the Lord is saying this afternoon. I'll provide for all your needs according to my riches and glory through Christ Jesus. This is what the Lord is saying to you this afternoon. The scripture says he restores my soul. Now restoration is something that was lost. And I thank God because when you have gone astray, you know, Bishop is always saying the Lord, our God is not a God of second chance. He's a God of another chance. He never counts to say, oh, now it's 30 times. Now it's five times when you have done this. Because that's what we do to each other, isn't it? This is the fifth time you've borrowed me and you don't give me my money on time. That's, that's how we kind of have relationships and we are counting. But God is not like that. God is a God of another chance. He restores your soul. He, he pulls back, he heals. He's Jehovah Rapha. That which is not aligning, he is able to restore. Hallelujah. You know, I thank God. God is like a, a sad nerve. If you go in the right direction, it doesn't say, oh, that's fine. You can carry on. A sad nerve will say, you need to make a huge turn. A sad nerve will say, you've gone the right direction. It will start to redirect. You need to go back or you need to use another route in order for you to get to your destination. That's exactly what God does with us. And that's what a shepherd does to his sheep. As they depend on him and obey, then he's able to direct them in the right way, in the right track. Hallelujah. So the Lord wants to restore anything that is not aligning in your life. He wants you to go back to the drawing board. He wants you to return. And when you have returned, then he's able to restore. He restores my soul. And the leading goes on. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I've just talked about the sudden of here. Now, the fact that the Lord wants you to live a righteous life and want you to be in right standing with him is not only for your benefit, but it also for his name's sake. Why is it that sometimes people who are not saved, they don't want to listen to Christians? Because they are looking and they are thinking, with the way you live your life, how do you expect me to be a Christian? Because I don't see that in your life. And so what is happening here is the name of our Lord is being degraded. Because it's not just you. You are an ambassador of Christ. You are representing Christ. And so if your walking with the Lord doesn't depict what is expected as a Christian, then you will never be able to draw anybody to Christ. And so the Lord wants us to walk righteously 
for the purpose of his name, for his name's sake. He wants us to be in right standing with him for the glory of his name. Hallelujah. In other words, when we, Christian is being Christ-like, we are here as ambassadors. We are here as representatives of Christ. So if we are here as representatives of Christ, we've got to have the character of Christ. Hallelujah. And this afternoon, this is what the Lord is speaking to us. Do we have that? Is our walk with him reflecting the name of the Lord? Is it reflecting the character of Christ? Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because my shepherd is with me. The Bible says he will never leave you nor forsake you. In the fire, he's still with you. And the Lord is just reminding us, I don't care what you're going through this afternoon, the hell, the valley, the mountain. He is still saying, I am with you. I've never left you. I've never forsaken you. Hallelujah. All you need to do is just to keep on depending on him. Do not move to the left or to the right. Just be focused. Focus on his word. Focus on prayer. Remember his promises are yes and yes. amen. If the prophetic word said you will prosper, if this word of the Lord said you will prosper, that's it. You stand on that word. It doesn't matter how things will look like. It doesn't matter how the enemy can try to play it. You should be able to stand there and say, I don't care, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for I know the Lord is with me. The Bible says he did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. So it doesn't matter how the enemy can try to intimidate you with the situation that you might be going through. I don't care how big that situation can be. The good shepherd is still saying, I'm with you. The good shepherd is still saying, I've never left you. The good shepherd is still saying, I've never forsaken you. The good shepherd is still saying, I love you. The good shepherd is still saying, you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. The good shepherd is still saying, you are victorious in the name of Jesus. He's never, he's still your shepherd. Things might be looking to be, they were working yesterday and now it looks like everything is just against you. He is still your shepherd. He hasn't left you. Sometimes it's just a process. Sometimes he just wants to prove himself. His name has to be glorified through that situation. People have to see that it is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Sometimes it's building your faith. Sometimes it's building your character. Hallelujah. So he has never left you nor forsaken you. Instead of you looking at that mountain and praying and say, Lord, until when? Look at it and say, Father, I thank you because I know there's something that is coming out of this situation. Hallelujah. It's time to realize that the Lord is our good shepherd. He can't leave you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew you. So he knew all these things that you are going through. How can he leave you now? That's why we go through. You are not dying in that process. But the Lord is just trying to prove himself in different situations. Hallelujah. It is my prayer this afternoon that in any situation that you might be going through, whether it marital, relationally, whether it be your children, whether it be business, jobs, health, you name it, the Lord is still in that situation. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it, it was not an issue of the Lord fighting for them before they were thrown into the fire. No, he appeared when they were right in the fire. And that's exactly what the Lord is doing in your situation. But what you need to do is to still depend on him. 
in that situation, you still need to have faith in him. In that situation, you still need to be praying the way you used to pray, even the more. In that situation, you still need to stop complaining and murmuring. You need to stop cursing God and cursing people and becoming bitter. And it's, it's a situation where you should just give praise to the Lord. The Bible says all things, all, 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 all things worketh together for good. For those who love God and are called by for his purpose, Romans 8 verse 28. So everything is working together for your good in whatever circumstances you are going through. You see, we've got to be careful about our tongue and our mindset when we are going through situations. It doesn't matter how much the enemy can minister to you. This doesn't change. You have to keep on reminding yourself. You know, somebody was telling me, oh, you know, now when I'm sleeping, I start to hear this. And I said, straight away, you need to wake up and take the word of the Lord and start to confess it. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. And how do you resist him? Through the word. Our minds must be renewed by the word. That's what the word of the Lord says. So the solution is here. As you are praying, learn to confess the word. No matter how the situation is like. You say, Father, when the enemy comes in, like a flood, you shall raise up your standard. Raise your standard. And you start to declare, raise your standard. Raise your standard against the enemy of my health. Raise your standard against the enemy of my child's life. Raise your standard against the enemy of my destiny. You've got to start to declare the word of God. No weapon that is fashioned against my life shall be able to prosper. No weapon fashioned against my health. No weapon fashioned against my marriage. No weapon fashioned against my children shall be able to prosper you've got to learn to declare the word no matter how the situation looks like you've got to learn to speak positive I'm totally made whole when you feel you can't even wake up from the bed you are declaring the fusion of your blood with the blood of Jesus. You are saying my DNA is not the DNA of the Kungu, but is the DNA of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are declaring this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. No sickness, no disease can reside. It's got to come out. You've got to declare the word. Stop confessing and say, you know, in our family, there is history of high blood pressure. There is history of diabetes. Then you will revolve around that. I'm coming from a family with that background. Every time people get pregnant, blood pressure is a big issue. But since I knew the Lord in another dimension, I said, not with me. I kept on confessing the word and I said as for blood pressure I refuse and I reject because I've got the blood of Jesus in me my DNA is the DNA of my father and all my pregnancies my blood pressure has been normal with that background and I'm not talking of my, just my immediate family I'm talking of the whole extended family even from my uncle's side Every woman has problems with blood pressure. But I refused and I said, no. As long as my DNA is of the master, then blood pressure is not my passion in the name of our Lord Jesus. You have been given that power and authority. It doesn't matter how way you are coming from things are like. It's for you, you are a different species. You've got to cut off. I have said, me and Bishop, we have said from our generation, no more. From our generation going forth, we are cutting ourselves from any strongholds from our bloodlines. You've got that power.
power and authority. Why? Because the Lord is your shepherd. But without that level of faith, it cannot happen. You will just be able to, you're praying, praying, you're excited, excited. Tomorrow something comes up. Now you're like, oh, I don't know. This situation is tricky, you know, my grandma died of it, or my grandfather. Then you have aborted the whole process. And so this afternoon, the Lord is just reminding us who he is in our lives. You are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me, is the greatest comforter. We know he sent the Holy Spirit to comfort us in any situation where people cannot comfort you, where you are down, where you are low. The Holy Spirit is there to comfort us. And verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Bishop always says, don't pray for your enemies to die. Hallelujah. Because God is going to demonstrate something in their presence. You don't need to worry about who is your enemy who is against you you know who has tried to sabotage you you don't need that's not your job your job is to love them that's what the bible says love your enemies and do good to those who hate you that's a big one because i'm sure as we are sitting here some have got grudges some have enemies some have even blocked some people because you don't want to speak to them some even spoken to some people for years because of enmity. But here the Bible says we should love our enemies and do good to those who hate us. And an enemy is somebody who is almost wanting to kill you, you know. And yet sometimes just in our families there is enmity. Just because somebody has done something that you don't like, we are not talking. And I'm not, I'm not talking to them. How will we expect God to come through in our lives? God wants us to go back even to these basics. Make sure we clear those. And then you have a clean spiritual atmosphere where you experience breakthroughs. If you have bitterness, you're not going to experience breakthroughs. Instead, you're going to be sick. Some of this sickness that people are experiencing is not anything else. It's purely bitterness. You've been bitter for years. And the Lord wants us to, he wants to set us free. Leave the God or leave God to fight for your battles. Any battles, whether it's a family battle, whether it's a work battle, a marriage battle, leave God to fight for you. Learn to consult him and say, Father, there is war here. I just need you to fight for me. Look here, when David faced Goliath, it was not in the weapons. You realize that it was not a weapon issue. It was a power issue. It was a faith issue. Hallelujah. It was not in the physical weapon issue. It was in the spiritual weapon issue. David said to Goliath, Goliath, you come to me with sword and javelin, but I come to you in the name of Jehovah. It was not in the five stones. It was the power behind those physical weapons. And this is what the Lord is reminding us this afternoon. So many things we've tried to fight with our own strength and we have tried to, you know, prove who we are. But the Lord is saying, no, don't fight. After all, I'll fight for you. He says, the battle does not belong to you. The battle belongs to me. And so leave the enemies to the Lord. Leave those who hate you to the Lord. They leave those who criticize you to the Lord. Just learn to love them. And he will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Your enemies will acknowledge one day that 
the God whom you worship is a true God. He's God who is alive. He's God who can protect. He's God who can fight. If we do the fighting, then where is God in all this? Where is dependence? You know, when, when you are depending with your father, when you are depending with your mother, I remember when I was in school and, you know, we're together with my brothers, nobody could mess with me because I, I had a big brother, you know. I would always tell them, if you mess with me, my big brother will, yeah, will deal with you. I had that dependence and I knew that I don't need to worry. Anybody who tries to mess with me, my brother will fight for me. It's the same with us and God. We have God who can fight any battle in our lives. It doesn't matter how it looks. It doesn't matter how big, how big it is. Learn to go before the Lord and say, Father, I surrender this battle before you. You fight for me. I surrender my enemies to you. You fight for me. Hallelujah. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And that word follow in Hebrew means shall pursue me, shall chase me. So goodness and mercy will chase you. Instead of you going for it, it will be chasing you. Not one day, not two days, not one week, not one month, not one year. All the days of your life. Hallelujah. This is the promises of the Lord when he becomes your shepherd. When he becomes your lead. When he becomes your guide. When he becomes your protector. When he becomes your provider. Goodness and mercy will pursue you, will chase you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Who wouldn't? If goodness and mercy is chasing me, where would I go? Hallelujah. But instead, as we are trying to run for it, yet the Lord is saying, just depend on me. Just, just leave everything to me. L let me lead you. L let me guide you. Let, let me protect you. Just leave your enemies to me. And all these things will just be chasing you. Goodness will be chasing you. Mercy will be chasing you. All the days of your life. Hallelujah. And so this afternoon the Lord is reminding us. I am your good shepherd. Depend on me. It's time, the time we are living in is a tricky time. When you look at the economy, when you look at everything else, you cannot predict what tomorrow looks like. First world countries are very good at predicting things, but as for now, no. It's very tricky. And it is the time that now it's even more paramount to depend on him. To depend on God. Not to lean on our own understanding. To know that he is our shepherd. It's time to go back to the drawing board. If you have been using your own ways, your own strategies, it's time to go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Return me. Restore me. Some, we need to go back to our first love. There was a time when you were depending on him and every time you, you faced a situation or you wanted to embark on something, you'd pray and wait on him and hear from him so that you would go ahead. But now it's more or less like, oh, this is how I would do it. How did somebody else do it? This is how I'm going to do it. Oh, I'm going to call somebody and find out. All those things are not bad, but is the Lord leading? Are we putting God first with regards to any area of our lives? Are our moods being dictated by how things are? When things are good and we have money in the bank account and I've got a job and all my bills are paid, now I'm happy. 
Or are we saying nothing will separate us from the love of God? It doesn't matter whether bills are paid or bills are not paid. It doesn't matter whether I've got a job or I do not have a job. It doesn't matter whether I've lost my job or I've not lost my job. It doesn't matter whether my kids are being rebellious, whether my marriage is working. Lord, I will still worship you. I will still serve you. I still have faith in you. I know you are still working together everything for my own good. I know you want to prove something in this situation. Lord, check on me. You know, sometimes we've got to also get to a level where we say, Father, maybe you need to check on me. Check my heart. Are you trying to teach me something here? Is my life still aligning or are you trying to say something to me? We should get to that and not just get to a level where we are blame shifting and complaining and murmuring but to say to reflect on ourselves just like the way David did creating me a clean heart oh God he was asking the Lord to search his heart in order to cleanse his heart and align everything that was not right and that's where we've got to go to. This gospel that we have now of prospering and I don't know this and this and that. The Lord wants us to go back to basics. He wants to do great and mighty exploits in these last days. But he's going to do it with a church that is spotless. A church without wrinkle. That's the one that he's coming for. But before he comes for that, we still need to manifest his power. So this afternoon, I'm just reminding you once again, the Lord is still with you. Let's depend on him. Let's surrender every area of our lives. When you see things are not working, sometimes it's time to put them aside and just glorify his name. You know, yesterday I was with my children at home and sometimes depending on my workload, I can work at the weekend. And there's a project which has cracked my head. So yesterday I was looking at the numbers again and I'm thinking, how on earth am I going to come out with an answer here? And you know, I just felt in my spirit, just close your laptop and everything and call your children and just worship. This was just outside the hours that we usually do our prayers. It was just a random hour. And I told them within an hour, I said to them, you know, do whatever you're doing. And at four o'clock, we're going to be praying. And we gathered together in the living room and we started to worship. And, and at that moment in time, I was not praying to say, Lord, I need solution to the project that I'm working on. No. It was just a moment to worship him and to praise him and to pray for other people and other things. We went for an hour. Even Christiana was also clapping her hands and, you know, we were worshiping the four of us. And by the time we finished worship, cooked dinner for them, I went back on the laptop. The Holy Spirit started to download solutions to the problem. It works. Because all this time I was, the whole week I was trying to think of my own ways. I asked my team to do something and all, and still it's not coming up with the answer that I'm looking at, I'm looking for. But just an hour of being in his presence, just to worship him, to glorify and to surrender everything, the Holy Spirit started to download solutions to this issue. I'm even relaxed because I know once I do what I need to do, the answer that I'm looking for is, is going to come out. That's all that the Lord wants. Dependence on Him. Some of the things that are taking months and years and they only need a few hours in the presence of the Lord. They just need you to go back to whom you depend on. And He's going to shorten that time that you are busy You've been dealing with for years. 
The Bible says a day to the Lord can be a thousand years and a thousand years can be a day to the Lord. It's him. He's the answer. Hallelujah. So this afternoon be reminded. Jesus is the answer. The Lord is your shepherd. Let's depend on him. Let's focus on him. People might not have given you the answers that you're looking for. Doctors might not have given you the answers that you're looking for. Your boss might not have given you the answer that you're looking for, but he has the answer. Hallelujah. Let us just arise and I want you to pray. I just want you to go before the Lord. And I just want you to pray and say, Lord, restore me. Take me back to the drawing board. If you are somebody whom you know, you have been working with the Lord and sometimes you would, or most of the times you would pray and seek the Lord for direction. And nowadays you just do things the way you feel is the right way. I just want you to go before the Lord and say, Father, take me to the drawing board. Restore me back to the level of depending on you. And for those who have never depended on him, it's the time to say, Father, teach me to depend on you. Teach me not to lean on my own understanding. Even for those who are watching live on line, it's, it's ministering to you as well. Just go before the Lord and say, restore me. Teach me to depend on you, Lord. Teach me to be consistent with my prayer life. If you are struggling to meditate on the word, you're saying, Father, teach me to meditate on your word day and night as you told Joshua so that I can be prosperous in my ways and be of good success so that I can also please you because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Come on, somebody, raise your voice. Come on, somebody, raise your voice, raise your voice. I can't hear you. Raise your voice. 